guys, welcome back to Geeks Wargaming, and we have another battle report for you today. Uh, I'm joined again by our buddy Max. Hello. And uh, we are playing another mission from the new chapter approved. We're playing Sweep and Clear. Uh, it is going to be Blood Angels versus uh, Craft Worlds. It's just pure Craft Worlds, isn't just it? Just pure Craft Worlds yeah, with yeah. Uh, custom traits. Great. Uh, and uh, we are actually trying out the new London GT um, terrain setup, as close as we can do with the terrain that we have available. It's pretty close. Um, it looks good. So, yeah, so um, we will show you that obviously in uh, in the sort of the deployment overview, what we're using. Max's 2000 points of Eldar Craft Worlds. It is a custom Craft World, so it's got expert crafters and it has got the one of. of forgotten Red. Hunters of uh, Hunters of Hidden Relics, which is the extra attack if you are holding an objective. Um, we've got the Phoenix Lord Azurman. Azurman. Yeah. How's your man? It sounds like to me. It does now. Um, the force is being led by an autark um, on a jet bike. And he has got the ignores Overwatch uh, Warlord trait, whatever that one's called. Yep. Uh, second in command is the Far Seer, and then there are two warlock warlocks on jet bikes as well, forming a Seer Council. Uh, three troop choices: Dire Avengers, uh, all WYSIWYG, uh, the Dual Shuriken catapults on the Exarchs. And uh, you've changed the power, haven't you? Yep. So using the abilities on of um, from Blood of the Phoenix, I think it is called. Uh, I've gone for Blade Storm on all of, on the uh, all of the Exarchs. So okay. every six to hit will generate an additional hit. There you go. Six to hit generate extra hits. If you didn't hear that, then the scary punch of the force are two big blob squads of shining spears, uh, really nicely painted non-metallic metal. And a uh, free handed banner it looks absolutely awesome. Some really cool conversions as well with the, um, I think they're high elf miniatures, aren't they? Uh, yeah, dragon the new AOS ones. Yeah, AOS miniatures over here, and then the old dragon knights or something, was yeah, it? Yeah, dragon princes. Dragon princes, yeah, so really cool conversions you've done there, Max. Thank you. Uh, then we've got the shadow spectres, these are the Forge World ones. Mm -hmm. um, they look like they should do quite a lot of um, scary firepower. They are all one wound, minus one to hit, three up save. They look they look pretty tasty. Uh, we'll just have to see how they get on. And then rounding out the force, we have a squadron of two hornets with the Eldar missile launcher. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one over here. And that's 2k on the nose, isn't it, Max? 2k on the nose. 2k on the nose. Here's my 2,000 points of Blood Angels. It's actually 1998, but, you know, what's two points between friends? Uh, so the force is led by the captain. I think, actually, a lot of these models are new to the channel. First time seen in a battle report, so they're probably all going to die in a stiff breeze because new model syndrome's a thing. Uh, but, yeah, the captain, he has got two warlord traits. I've, uh, I've spent a CP to give him additional warlord trait so he's got imperium sword to make him extra fighty and he's also got soul warden to make him have um an aura of feel no pain to mortal wounds because i knew i was coming against eldar i know max likes to bring psychers so i thought that might come in quite handy he's got the relic which is reroll charges he's going to be obviously going around with a lot of uh, assault intercessors so uh, that could be quite useful too uh, he is then followed around by Mephiston, who has got Wings of Sanguinius, Unleash Rage, and the Quickening, as well as Smite, because he's Chief Librarian, so he can have all of those. Quite a lot of troops choices in this army. So I've got two squads of Intercessors, Assault Intercessors, sorry, uh, WYSIWYG, all just Chainswords and Heavy Bolt Pistols. Uh, normal intercessors, again, WYSIWYG, Sergeant has a chainsword, it's on his back, and uh, there is a grenade launcher in that squad, and uh, no grenade launcher in that squad. Uh, the tactical squad, again, completely WYSIWYG, just bolters in there, the one pointing uh, is the Sergeant, and he has got a chainsword. Then we've then got nine sanguinary guard, 
uh, we have three axes, two fists, and four swords. Uh, so they're nice and uh, fighty. Then have an eight-man squad of Death Company. And uh, the Death Company have got two power swords in there, a thunder hammer, two power fists, and then some chain swords. In fast attack, we have the plasma inceptors and some outriders. Then I've got three dedicated transports. Again, these are brand new to the channel. The two impulsors with the shield domes, just give them a bit more survivability. And then the Razorback with the assault cannon. And that is my 2000 points. Here is our table for today. Uh, so as we've said, we're using the uh, London GT map uh, for this. So we've kind of had to make a few sort of I don't know, artistic license where possible. So uh, this, these two buildings are the big um, obscuring ones, which are supposed to be 20 by 20 centimeters. This is actually 25 centimeters long uh, by 15. So we've just kind of edged it off here. So if you're within that, you're completely obscured in that ruin. Uh, and the same over here, this one is 15 centimeters. So we've just bogged it out with some crates at the back. So it's roughly the same. Uh, and then these are two, they're supposed to be, uh, not, I think these are obscuring, um, we probably obviously playing as obscuring your ruins, and these are the sort of medium sized L ones in the uh, London GT. I haven't quite got the scenery to do it perfectly, so we're just using this bunker as a ruin, uh, so you can get into it, breachable, all of that. Um, again, we've had to use a bit of artistic license, so we're just using craters. Uh, in the London GT, they've got a big sort of uh, air vent or something which works the same as a crater. So we're just using some craters here. And then uh, these again are just a low level ruin, but which is using them as uh, the industrial sector. So it will be minus one. So it's not exactly like it, but it's as close as we can get uh, with the scenery. This is a ruin, not obscuring, as is this one. And again, bulked it out. So it's got the type of footprint that we need it to have. So I think playing, playing on this should be quite interesting. Uh, you're going to have to be a lot more tactical uh, with your movement around the map. Lots of minus one, lots of obscuring, uh, lots of cover. Should be quite good for both very mobile, sort of quite close combat orientated armies. Um, so yeah, there we go. That is the table. Both armies are down. The Blood Angels are going first. And they have deployed very aggressively. We have the Razorback uh, on this flank ready to shoot across and pick up that objective. He is supported by two squads of intercessors. Where the uh, red barricade is, that is where we're saying is the edge of the terrain. So that all counts as a line of sight blocking piece of terrain. Uh, these ones do not because uh, they're slightly lower. But again, we're just using the uh, the barriers there to show you the footprint of the building. Uh, so we have the tactical marines, they are sitting on that objective. Uh, within the two uh, impulses, uh, we have um, Mephiston in one and he's got assault, assault intercessors. And we have a captain in the other, again, with assault intercessors. Uh, we have the uh, outrider bikes on this flank and uh, I have pre-moved with my deaf company uh, they were actually in this building we're counting this as a, a ruin um, so they have pre-moved uh, because of Max's deployment I couldn't quite get the full 12 inch move because uh, I have to stay uh, uh, nine inches away with the way that uh, the forlorn fury works now um, but I'm still very close I'm still within sort of 12 inches so my next turn well in my first turn I can move up and pretty much attack what I want to um, over here so Max's deployment we have um, the Dar Avengers uh, two squads of Dar Avengers we have Ash 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 Ashman Ashman yes. Phoenix Lord there you go you don't see those often but today we've got special character versus special character um, these are Shadow Spectres, the Forge they are ones. Indeed, yes. Not, not long for this world, apparently. But uh, yes, they are, they are there at the minute. 
Hopefully not, because uh, Max has told me what their guns do now, and they're quite scary now. So, yeah, they need to get punched in the face really hard. Um, we got the Hornets, four yep. of them across the top. Yeah, two units of two. Yeah, another squad of Dar Avengers, so they're securing that objective at the moment. And then here we have the bulk and the scary part of the force. So we have uh, Autark at the front. Uh, we have the Shining Spears, which are these two rows yep. at the uh, the back there. And then we have the Farseer, which is the Urain version. Like, yep. uh, and then we have two Warlocks around here as well. And then we've got some more Shadow Spectres hiding. More Shadow Spectres are just hiding there. Uh, nothing in uh, Deep Strike Reserve or anything like that Absolutely. for the Eldar, but for the... Um, Blood Angels, I've, I've got the Sanguinary Guard and also the um, Plasma Inceptors, so that's where they are. The Blood Angels have moved up very aggressively. Uh, the Razorback has moved across just to try and get as close to that objective as possible. That gives him some good lines of fire down here. Uh, the Intercessors, I advanced and uh, got a 5 on my advance, so they're well on the objective. Uh, the other intercessors in this building have just moved forward just to support Mephiston and the assault intercessors. They got out of the front um, impulsor and uh, they are now a 7 inch charge away from those Dar Avengers. The captain got out of the second one um, and uh, obviously that's where he is. The impulsor then moved up and the intercessors got out and moved in there. So they won't be able to charge this turn, but they are sort of just putting pressure in this kind of center of the board there. Uh, the outriders have moved their 10 inches round just to sort of put some pressure on this objective. They've also got lots of uh, things that they can be shooting at. This army hasn't got a lot of guns in it, so it is more down to uh, its melee. So I need to just get up the board as quickly as possible, really. Uh, so we're going to go into the psychic phase. I'm a little bit tempted to do something with Mephiston, but I'm not sure I'm brave enough. Probably shouldn't be brave enough. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Max, me. Max has been baiting me to charge into the Phoenix Lord, whatever his face is. As a man. As a man. Because uh, I've got Wings of Sanguinius. I've got Quickening. So, yeah. Could, could get there, but he'd be out in out in the open having said that the deaf company have come round here so they are creating a little bit of a Cowards. barrier a little bit of a barrier for him oh i don't know don't know so uh yeah let's uh let's see how the psychic can shoot and go so i'm quite happy with the amount of damage that i managed to uh, kick out with my army because it's got only really some small arms fire uh, and assault cannon <laughs> Some heavy stubbers. Um, but yeah, the assault cannon have managed to uh, get rid of the Dar Avengers that are uh, just shielding the Phoenix Lord. Um, and over on this side, uh, this is sort of the combined fire of the two impulsors and uh, the outriders. Uh, I managed to get rid of the shadow spectres, so, mm. so that was quite useful. Um, just did some plinking damage on this squad of Dar Avengers. Killed one there. And Mephiston did jump up. He uh, cast uh, Quickening and Wings of Sanguinius. I was thinking about doing Unleash Rage, but I think that would have been a bit overkill for an extra CP because um, they already get a lot of, lot of uh, attacks, so it probably wasn't going to be worth it. I was thinking that these Dire Avengers, because they do get four of Invun, don't they, when they're close? They do, yes. Uh, to this Phoenix Lord, so I was thinking they might be quite hard to actually kill, um, but uh, Max had a bit of a whiffer there, as usual. Oh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's now on to uh, the charge phase. So we're in the middle of the fight phase. Just thought we'd roll this one, because it's a bit epic, isn't it? Um, so Mephiston, with all of his extra buffs, his quickening and everything like that, got nine attacks on the charge. Max has put lightning fast reflexes, so I was hitting on threes. Mm -hmm. I hit you six times. Uh, I wounded you five times. Yeah. That was with a reroll. Um, he's got four up in Vun. He's three up in Vun in close combat. Three up in Vun. Yeah. That's why I rerolled the extra wound to try and get some extra damage through. Uh, Max failed three. Rerolled one. Saved it. So two 
have gone through and each one of these is D3 damage. He's got six wounds. He's got six wounds. He's got six wounds. So. Please don't, it's my birthday. <laughs> oh! oh! Happy birthday, Max. He's still alive. <laughs> That's all you're getting. <laughs> The Eldar started moving round. Uh, most notable thing here is the Phoenix Lord, whatever his, face, whatever his face is. <laughs> Show some respect. He has fallen out of combat, but uh -huh. then dirty, dirty Eldar tricks. What have you done, Max? I'm, I'm spending two CP so I can fall, uh, feign retreat. I'm going to fall back and then charge you, because I think that's only fair. You charge me, I get to charge you. There you go. So, yeah, two CP, fall back, charge. Fair enough. So I've told Max that I'm going to overcharge my plasma pistol, <laughs> roll a one, so he won't be charging me. Ha! Um, the Hornets that were untouched have uh, come around here, and uh, they've got plenty of shots. So Meph Mephistan, the Assault Marines, Assault Marines, <laughs> Assault Intercessors. Oh, no, no, I think we should mention the gentleman's agreement. I, I, we did. We did have a gentleman's agreement, but this just goes to show that you should never trust an Eldar what? player. <laughs> Because we had a gentleman's agreement, which was... They said no other Eldar help would, would, would happen between that combat. Uh, okay, okay. So technically, that's still, that's still a thing. Exactly. So no, technically. No one is going to interfere in this combat apart from these two. They're going to interfere with each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and on that note, the uh, Shadow Spectres... Yeah. Yeah, I know the names. Uh, they've oh. come out of the building... Yeah, looking at some assault intercessors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at those guys. Uh, the Dire Avengers just held firm there, obsecking that. Uh, the really, really badly damaged uh, Hornet has come out of combat with the uh, Death Company for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, and uh, yeah, the Shadow sh shadow Spears? Shining Spears uh, are all Ooh, lined shadow up. Shadow Spears, I like that. Oof. They're a new one. Watch it in the new Codex when it comes out next yeah, maybe. <laughs> Why'd you have to do me like that? That's it. The pain. That's it. So, yeah, I think these death company are about to get deleted because that's an awful lot of high-powered shots which they're going to take. And also, we have the uh, Farseer and the Warlocks as well. So, uh, yeah, a bit of pain is going to go into those boys there. Uh, the Dar Avengers, the four-man squad, has just come around to sit on that objective. Uh, very bravely out in the open, but they are going to score that. And I think that's it. There's no. Oh, Autark is on top of the building here. He's being a bit crazy. He is being a bit crazy. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, move on to the old Eldar phase, psychic phase, and uh, yeah, see how he gets up. Right, so there's quite a lot that went on in the psychic phase, and I was just, okay, yeah, mm, okay, yeah. Well, so, well, um, well. yeah, I tried to deny a couple of things. And because of all the buffs that the psychic previously had done, yes. I was unable to do it despite Mephiston rolling like tens and stuff like that. So what happened exactly, right, so Max? Starting off the psychic phase, we cast, uh, well, we did Seer Council for plus one to cast, and we were doing it on my Farseer, and also the Warlock with Quicken slash Restrain. Okay, which one was that? Uh, so Farseer, Farseer and Quicken slash Restrain guy. Yeah. So, uh, I started off with the Farseer, we cast uh, Fortune onto the Altark, giving him a 5 plus feel no pain. Yeah. Uh, we then tried to cast Doom into the Assault Intercessors in, in this building here. In the building there, you should see the yellow helm. Just see it. Uh, and then we spent 1 CP to cast again. And then we cast Focus Will, and I did the Focus Will onto the Quicken slash Restrain Warlock right here again. Yeah. So in total, that gave him a plus three to cast. Moving on to the Jinx slash Protect Warlock, we did Psychic Interrogation onto Mephiston. We dived into his brain, took out all of his naughty secrets, and now we know his, his, uh, his browser history. And also three victory points. Yeah, you don't want to check that out, not on him. The weirdo, yeah, yeah, and that was one of the things which I tried to deny. Um, but you, I think you rolled a 10 and I rolled a nine, yes, so, 
Yeah. And then to cap it off, we cast Quicken onto the Shining Spears that are no longer here. Um, I rolled a mighty 8, turning into 11 with the plus 3. And you rolled... I rolled an 11, but yeah, it doesn't go... Uh, sorry, 11 with my plus 1. So yeah, I didn't beat it. So it still went off. So yeah, now we're looking at the Shining Spears, looking at some very, very exposed tanks and bikes. They have got shield domes on, remember? Nice. That, that means they get two up in them. Oh, no. What? Have you not read that? Yeah. Uh, right, let's move on to the shooting phase. That was a pretty brutal shooting phase there. Uh, so the death company over here uh, lost five men to shooting. I did use two CP to give them a five up, feel no pain. And that's why there is still two alive, because basically everything here shot at them. And I got quite lucky with my feel no pain saves. So yep. yeah, just the twos. Uh, the assault uh, intercessors that were there got wiped off. Uh, that was just combined fire from the Autark up here and the Shining Spears round here. Uh, missile launchers from the Hornets went into this transport. Uh, managed to get a couple of saves with those shield domes. Knew there was a reason for bringing those. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's still alive, just the three wounds plinked off. Uh, the Outriders on this side, uh, the Shining Spears, uh, just auto-removed two of them. Uh, so that was that was pretty brutal. And then there's just one guy that got killed out of the Intercessors in that ruin. But yeah, pretty, pretty brutal, actually. So I'm kind of on the ropes a bit now. Uh, we're on to the charge phase, and there's... Lots of scary things that can charge. So uh, let's see what Max does. So we bring you back to the fight phase between Mephiston and whatever this guy's called. Azerman! His name's not worth remembering. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so he used Supreme Disdain. Yeah. So that basically generates hits on sixes. Yeah, every six is an additional attack. So... He missed one, rolled a six, then that re extra roll missed or something, didn't it? No, no, I... I, I uh, so you got five hits in total? Five hits in total, yeah. I spent, five. spent the CP to re-roll a hit. Oh yeah, that was it. So, five hits in total, whiffed his re-roll. Wound roll. What, do you need to wound him? Because he's toughness five? You needed fours, don't you? Why, why are you strength toughness, four? Toughness five. Why am I only so, four? So Max has rolled his wounds. Bearing in mind, I've got a two, up, uh, a two up save, but it's minus four, isn't it? It's minus minus three. Minus three, and then it does more wounds. On sixes, yeah. This was Max's wound roll, and he's already used his CP. Yeah. Failed. Supreme disdain, you say? Let's just uh, wait until I get to hit you back, sir. So the charge in the fight phase is over, and as the dust settles, there can only be one champion. And we know who that is. Mephiston. Mephiston has just pushed aside that guy who nobody cares what his name is. He's just dead. He's a smear on the floor. <laughs> Max is shaking his head off camera here. He did actually go out and have a little bit of a shout in the garden as well. So, uh, no, yeah. No, 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 you're right. You're right. He's, he's, he's pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've just, um, we've just worked it out with all the things like lightning fast reflexes and re rolls to hit and wound and all that. Jumping out of combat. Yeah, oh, jumping out of combat. Yeah. He spent seven CP on that guy and he's died in turn one. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. It was good fun, though. Good little, good little brawl, I thought. Um, yeah, so the rest of the combat, yeah, because we've all seen what Mephiston and that guy's done, the guy that nobody cares about. Uh, this was a bit of a whiff fest. I did tend to spend two CP uh, on this combat to try and thin their numbers down, and I missed absolutely everything. So, uh, yeah, that was that was probably karma for laughing at Max. Uh, the Autark made short work of the intercessors in there. I just haven't got them out yet because it's a really awkward building. Uh, the uh, Impulsor has gone kablooey. Uh, he consolidated into the Outrider. Uh, I did swing back, but did not do any damage. So uh, we are now moving on to the Blood Angels. There wasn't anything else, was there? It was just basically no. that big rook there. Autark, Shining Spears. Yeah, 
So, uh, yeah, moving on to the Blood Angels turn two. It's already a well bloody battle. Uh, so let's see what damage Mephiston can do. Look at him, the Lord of Death, he's amazing. Just before we go on to turn two, we're just going to sum up the secondaries. So the Eldar have scored how many points for your secondaries, Max? Uh, nine points for the secondaries. So three points for Stranglehold, Direct Assault and Psychic Interrogation. So he's done quite well on that one. And uh, the Blood Angels have scored... Uh, you have scored uh, seven points. Three points for Assassination and four points for Oath of Moment, with Direct Assault being zero at the minute. Cool. All right, on to turn two. The intercessors that were sitting on this objective uh, have just moved into the cover, so they're getting the minus one to hit. The Razorback that was supporting them has moved up just to get in range of as much as possible round here. Uh, shouldn't be too much. I need to get rid of these Hornets as well. The Inceptors have jumped down, so they can point at these uh, Hornets or equally can thin out the numbers of the Shining Spears because they are pretty scary. Even though they've got four up in Vun, yeah, it's a big, big squad. So I'll be getting a lot of shots on them. Uh, the intercessors that were in this building have moved to secure that objective. And they are accompanying the captain. The remaining impulsor has just moved across again to get some shots downfield. The outrider, I've sacrificed the point on over moment because I just need to thin this out with some shooting. Um, so he has just moved to sort of sit in front of that objective and generally be a little bit annoying. And then the sanguinary guard have come in uh, over here. So they are nine inches away. Um, bit of a gamble because obviously I'm going to pump in a lot of shots. So I'm sure Max will be making that charge as hard as possible for me. But if not, they should charge in and uh, do a lot of damage to those guys. So uh, let's move on to the psychic phase because Mephiston, the Lord of Death. He's still alive, and he's going to put some hurt on these boys. So the shooting has come in from these Inceptors. Uh, they've overcharged, and they shot into the Shining Spears. Uh, one of them obviously died, and it was on the first gun, so it wasted three shots afterwards. But hey, even though, you know, he's next to the captain, but whatever. Um, killed, was it about four of them? In that? Yeah, killed four of them. Killed four of them from that, and then the rest of them have just been plinked down. That was by combined arms of uh, the intercessors, the sanguinary guard, and uh, the tactical marines, which are in that ruin over there. Uh, the sanguinary guard also could see these uh, Dar Avengers. Uh, killed two of those, so uh, just pulling them away from that objective slightly there. The uh, transport, the Impulsor, shot into the Shadow Spectres, yep, Shadow Spectres. Um, killing a couple of those, and then the uh, the Razorback had a complete whiffer, and uh, there was only, I think there was two of them left, and <laughs> 12 shots from an assault cannon only managed to kill one, so that wasn't particularly good. Um, but yeah, definitely thinning the numbers down. Uh, we're going on to the charge phase. My captain is right next to this Autark. He's actually on that level, but he kept falling off. So, yeah, little charge there. And Mephiston is going to get back into the action and uh, kill some Dire Avengers and other people, hopefully. So, let's move on to the charge phase. Yeah, I'm just editing it now. Yeah, it's going really well. Yeah, yeah, it's going really well. What do you mean? No, of course I've managed to film all of it and not missed anything at all. Yes, and I made sure that the camera was really still and it wasn't shaky or wobbly or anything like that. Yes, yes, I've remembered to tell them to like, share, subscribe. Right, yes, yes, I know, yes. Yes, remind them that we've got Patreon as well, and there's a link down below. Yeah, 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 done all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, bye. Okay. No, I'm not saying it. No, I'm not. I love you too. So guys, um, just 
just editing the video and uh, kind of missed a bit of footage, didn't I? So uh, we've just missed one of the fight phases there. Uh, it's okay, nothing major happened. Uh, the captain killed the Autark. Mephiston killed the Dar Avengers, taking them off the objective. And uh, the Impulsor charged the two Hornets, tying them up. But not, nothing, nothing too important. But just, just don't tell Richard, because he'll shout at me. And we don't want that to happen. So in the comments, just put, turn two, fight phase. What a beauty. You'll never know. Back to the video. The Eldar have pushed hard on this flank, trying to protect their home objective and do as much damage as possible. Just for clarification, they're not in engagement range. We're measuring from base on the jet bikes, not from the point of the model. That's what we agreed at the start of the game, so that's absolutely fine where they are. Uh, so these are still in combat, aren't they, Max? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably going to be a quicken to get these into a better position. Potentially the uh, Hornet, Hornet? Hornet that was on here has just chugged across with his one wound remaining. Couldn't get any shots on him last turn. And then the Dire Avengers have just moved into a better position to hold that objective. So this is where all the action is. The Shadow Spectre has also moved round. He's got shots towards this unit that's... Uh, holding that objective, but also the Inceptors. So we're gonna move on to the Psychic phase. This is probably gonna either win or lose the battle for Max, potentially. So let's see how he gets on. Uh, again, quite an eventful Psychic phase. So as you can see, Max did get quickened off, did attempt to deny it, but he did a roll, roll an 11, and then with the plus one, because the Seer Council made it a 12. I could have technically denied it if I'd rolled a 12 because I get plus one to deny with a psychic hood but yeah didn't do it anyway whatever um getting close, getting close came close I've rolled a 10 so yeah not too bad uh so quick and went off uh, I denied the focus will um which at least gave me a chance to deny that what else did you cast Max uh, so I cast fortune onto the bikes oh yeah five plus feel and I failed getting protect on them which yeah. really hurt yeah, so no protect, but they've got fortune, so they've got five up, feel no pain. So they're still going to be pretty tanky with a four up in Vun and five up, feel no pain. Three up in Vun would have been better though, but you know, still, they're still going to do some work. So this is going to be a crunch turn. Let's see how he gets on. The Shining Spears all shot every single shot into the Intercessors, try and clear those off to dominate that objective. Um, I did play transhuman uh, to block all of the um, sort of the spear damage, basically, which I wouldn't have saves against, and uh, that probably helped me out quite a lot. Uh, so I think I lost two automatically that I couldn't save, and then all the shuriken came in, killed the other two. So it's just the sergeant uh, remaining, uh, but he is still there. Uh, no damage was put on this impulsor, was it? No. Nope. No, all bounced off. Uh, the sad news is the mighty, the mighty Mephiston died to a shuriken, shuriken catapult from the far sea. Yep. <laughs> Rolled a one into a one. Brilliant. Uh, the uh, the biker over here, he took a missile to the face, uh, blocked that, uh, but he took some shuriken fire, and uh, that went through. So he is down by one wound. So we are on to the charge phase now. I'm guessing it's going to get a bit fruity over here. Brutal fight phase there. So the Shining Spears charged into the Intercessor and the Captain, wiping out the Intercessor with not much effort at all, killing him instantly with one of their uh, spear attacks. Uh, the Captain then took the attacks from the rest of them. There was only one that attacked the Intercessor. So that was eight Shining Spears all attacking the Captain. And uh, he... Very, very nearly survived. If I'd got a CP left, I would have used it. And uh, hopefully he would have survived. But uh, yeah, he was just dragged down with the weight of attacks. Uh, then what Max has done is uh, in his consolidation, he's managed to, the way he sort of placed the guys meant that the Inceptors were closer to these guys. And uh, the Impulsor is closer over here. So he's managed to sort of tie those all up. Um, the shining shadow 
Spectre. Shadow Spectre. Shadow yes. Spectre. I forgot what it was called. Uh, went into the Razorback, causing no damage and took no damage in return, but he has tied him up. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it was pretty pretty brutal over there. Uh, over here, uh, the Death Company. Um, my uh, Death Company hit the Warlock. I actually hit at attacked both Warlocks. Uh, killed one of them, as you can see. Uh, the other one survived by making his invun saves. So that was slightly annoying there. Um, but yeah, this game is really, really close. Um, we've just tied the score up and after the secondaries, because uh, I dropped out of combat with this guy, didn't score oath of the moment for that one point. He's taken me off the centre, so haven't got one there, but I did kill a character, so I scored one for oath of the moment. Uh, I was actually holding the middle and that objective at the end of my turn, so I scored five on the mission secondary. And then I got assassinate, so that was two points for assassinate. Three points, three points for assassinate, and that was on that warlock. Uh, and Max, you scored what in your secondary? Sorry. Uh, so I scored three points for stranglehold and three points for director assault being in the centre. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so six points from Max for his secondaries. And um, yeah, as I said, total is thirty to thirty-six to the Blood Angels. So very close going into turn three now. Um, me and Max have just been discussing this and we think these golden boys here, they're going to make the difference between a win and loss for the Blood Angels, I think. They are quite far away, probably misplayed these, brought them down too early. Um, but yeah, we just have to see how this goes. Need to get rid of these, but everything that I want to shoot them with really is tied up in combat with them. It's going to be tricky. Okay, so despite me only having very few models on table, that was very, very hard for me to think of and uh, it's taken me probably a lot longer than it should have um yeah so uh, i was trying to get the razor back through that gap to sit on that objective uh, however uh, he, he's too fat so he couldn't go through uh the remaining intercessor assault assault intercessor uh has moved so he's now sitting there for my oath of moment and also the direct assault, direct assault. Uh, the Sanguinary Guard have moved up. Um, they are a 9-inch charge away, and that is with my plus 1 for Blood Angels. So, yeah, it's a bit of a clutch charge there. Uh, the Outrider has just sort of swung round slightly. Uh, he's got sort of, obviously, shots on this, or just to clear the Dire, dire Avengers off that. Uh, and then the Impulsor came out of combat and he's come around here just so I've got two models sitting on that objective. So I'm kind of contesting that. And uh, over here, nothing nothing moved. They're still gaining their plus, uh, minus one to hit. Um, I'm just going to kill him with the uh, razor back in, uh, in the shooting phase there. And uh, my tactical marines are still hiding sitting on that objective for me. Uh, so this this is basically the turn that makes or breaks this game. Let's see how we get on. So in the shooting phase, yeah, pretty uh, pretty lame. Uh, nothing really happened other than that guy got assault cannon to death and uh, the Dire Avengers, uh, they got uh, shot by the Sanguinary Guard because that was the only target really that they could reach. Uh, did try and plink a shot onto the Hornet but missed with three of them. So couldn't get that last wound off. So uh, it is on to the all important charge phase. So uh, yeah, let's get the golden boys in, shall we? The shining spears stand resolute in the center of the board. Sanguinary guard did not get in. They were one inch shy and that was using my last command point. I did, I did, Think about charging him in, uh, but it would have been complete suicide. And he has just scored me for holding the centre objective. So I've got two points for that. Uh, three points. Three yeah. points for the centre. So yeah, and the points are very important in this. It's quite close. Um, we recalculated actually, and uh, it wasn't thirty six thirty to me. It was actually forty to 30 so there's a 10 point deficit at the moment uh, but I'd say the Eldar are looking to be in the ascendancy uh, it's all down to 
Down to these golden boys. Can they hold out against the Shining Spears? Let's see how Max gets on in his turn. So the Shining Spears have zoomed past the Intercessor Sergeant to get right in the face of the Sanguinary Guard. There is going to be a lot of shots, a lot of high-powered shots coming their way. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough for them to survive. Uh, over here, the two psychers have come round to harass the Outrider, and uh, they're supported by the one wound hornet that just does not want to die. Uh, the other two hornets have just moved across to put some pressure on that objective, so that's contested now, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's all down to what happens here. Let's move on to the shooting phase. And by shooting phase, obviously I meant psychic phase. Uh, so focused will has been cast on the warlock. Mm -hmm. And then what have we got? Jinx on these boys? Yeah, we cast doom. Jinx and Doom onto the Sanguinary Guard. Yeah, so mm, not going to be too good for them. So all of those laser lances are just going to kill, basically. Uh, don't get saved against those anymore. So that is probably the final nail in the coffin for the Blood Angels, I reckon. But uh, yeah, let's uh, see how we get on in the shooting phase. And at the end of the shooting phase for the Eldar, despite there not being masses of things to shoot, uh, it was very brutal. Uh, the Shining Spears, to make sure that they got rid of this guy because he was... Worth yeah, five well, eight points. points. Eight points. Eight points, yeah. Damn. Yeah, he's worth eight points, really, for me on secondaries and the primary, actually. Um, so, yeah, he had to go. So, Max put everything here into him. A bit overkill. But... Probably a bit overkill, but uh, they're probably going to mop up the Sangard quite easily anyway. Uh, the Outrider uh, got shot by uh, the... Oh, yeah, missiles. the Hornet with the missiles, point blank range with the missiles there. And the two Hornets here shot across at the Razorback, doing eight damage to him. So pretty brutal for very small amounts of fire. So we are now moving into the charge and fight phase. Let's see what's left afterwards. And at the end of the fight phase, this is all that remains one sanguinary guard has survived the onslaught and in return he killed four four of the bikes but they are leadership eight i have lost eight so he is pretty much guaranteed to run away unless i roll a one on his morale let's do it shall we Oh, and Max's morale. Lost four. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Right, let's see how many run away then. All right, so one. From one automatically. Time. And then I'm under half strength. Yeah, so twos and threes. Oh, this is big. Oh! That's just twos, isn't it? Ones and twos. Ones and twos. So you've got two left. Two left. This game is so close. It's crazy. Right, we'll be back for the summary in a second. <laughs> okay, so we've just looked at the secondaries. I've scored four secondaries. One for Direct Assault and one for Oath of Moment. And Max has scored three for Direct Assault. Any of us? Yeah, three for Direct Assault, that's it. Three for Direct Assault. So I'm still slightly ahead. Oh, it hangs in the balance now, really does. Max has got more punch on the table, but I'm probably slightly better positioned. Oh, it's going to be close. Let's see how we get on in turn four. We've got a very cagey movement again. Um, the Sanguinary Guard has jumped out of combat. He's jumped behind this line of sight blocking. So these are going to have to move away from that objective that I'm sitting on if they want to kill him. Uh, it also means that I can shoot the Shining Spears. I have got some tactical marines there and a very banged up Razorback. It's going to be hitting on fives. Might get lucky. You never know. I can't really do anything here. 
Um, yeah, not a lot on the board, not a lot on the board at all. So let's uh, go to shooting. The objective is to get rid of these. The shooting phase is over, the tactical marines and the Razorback fired through at the Shining Spears and managed to clear them off. Yeah, that was actually mainly the, uh, the tactical marines that did all the damage. Max's uh, safe rose then really let him down, lots of ones and twos, not what he needed. So they are dead. The Hornet over here, cheeky shots from the Impulsor, finished him off, so not holding that objective anymore. And that is it. Uh, no, sorry, we plinked two wounds off that. That was with shots from the Intercessors here. <sighs> Yeah, it's getting very close to the end of the game. Neither of us have got a lot. Um, yeah, let's uh, move on to Eldar turn for movement because for once there's not going to be a charge phase for the Blood Angels. Quick fire movement. Hornets have moved around, sitting on the center objective. Warlock is sitting on this objective, and the Farseer is over here. Uh, let's move on to the shooting. I think a Sanguinary Guard might be very dead. So, in the Psychic phase, uh, Doom and Jinx, was it? Doom and Jinx, yeah. Doom and Jinx onto the Impulsor. Mm -hmm. uh, shots came across from the Hornets and also some Shuriken, uh, taking him down to three wounds, so wasn't able to clear him off the objective. We've just done the charges. Hornets have gone into the Sanguinary Guard. And the Farseer has gone into the Impulsor. So let's see if these units are still alive when we get back. And at the end of the fight phase, the Sanguinary Guard took all the attacks from the Hornets, managed to kill the damaged one and take the other one down to six wounds remaining. Uh, the Farseer managed to take this down to two wounds Managed to make a couple of invun saves there, which was very lucky. Uh, we're going to play it out. Uh, it is still reasonably close, so it's worth playing out. So let's move on to turn five. The Sanguinary Guard has managed to take another two wounds off the Hornet. The Razorback did come charging in, did no damage as expected. Uh, the Farseer did finish off the Impulsor though, it didn't explode. And that was it. So final turn for the Eldar. Uh, let's see what they can do. So a summary of turn five for the Eldar there. Um, yeah. Farseer's on this objective. Warlock's on this objective. Hornets move around to that objective. So sitting on the three. So obviously at the end of the game, they score those. So outscored me on the primary that turn, didn't you? I did, well. Uh, you scored at the start of the turn, so you were actually on more objectives, so you, you scored the 15. Yeah, I scored, I 15, scored 15, then you scored 15. Yeah, because it's just the way it works at the end of the game. Um, obviously, cleared the last Sanguinary Guard off. That was shooting, combined firepower from these two, and then the Farseer charged into the Razorback and finished that off as well. Uh, and that is basically it. So at the end of the game... Uh, it is a win for the Blood Angels, but that that game, I think, was it turn end of turn two? It looked like I was probably going to lose, yeah. uh, and then it, the 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 main thing was just that one rolling that one there for the Sanguinary Guard to stay in the fight. That that has basically won me the game, really. Uh, so the final score, Max, is. 59 to 86. So 59 to the Eldar, 86 to the Blood Angels. Let's go over to the post-game review. So guys, that is the end of the game. And what a game. That was poor. That was brutal. That was just... Ow. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was just uh, mentally, I think we're both mentally drained because there was a lot of... Obviously, you don't get to see it because uh, we don't film us standing there thinking for 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, there was an awful lot of thought that went into a lot of the moves there. So it felt like quite a tactical game, really. Um, I think the scenery layout as well, with yes. this, that's, that's really made a, a massive difference. We've played some other games where the scenery hasn't... Although we've had the same scenery, 
just the layout wasn't obviously as optimised as this and this has made a real difference. You have to really think about where you position things and getting your firing lines properly and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a, it's a decent a decent terrain setup. So we're gonna keep with that um, for these types of slightly more competitive games. Um, I think, you know, the Blood Angels probably got a little bit lucky with <laughs> things uh, there. Um, a single Sanguinary Guard taken yeah. out. Essentially an entire unit of Shining Spears <laughs> off the charge. Beast mode he went. <laughs> How many did he actually kill? So he killed four in combat and then three ran away. Uh, yeah. So, se yeah, seven. One Sanguine Guard, seven Shiny Spears. Uh, as Get as out. As with failing to kill Mephiston. Yeah, yeah. Rolling, but that was it? Three ones, a two and a three. Yeah, that was an epic combat, though. It was, yeah, absolutely. No, it was just ridiculous to stop. Uh, you didn't, we didn't film it, but uh, the two Hornets were supposed to charge into the backfield impulsor to, just to get that yeah. objective for me. So I get, got Stranglehold and to also keep the other Hornet alive because nothing else can shoot it. I rolled double one. Yeah, needed a three. Yeah, literally any other result. It was yeah, nuts. not good. I think with, with your luck, it seemed like your psychic powers, I couldn't do anything to stop your psychic powers because you were rolling really high on your psychic powers. Um, but you, some of your saves were absolutely abysmal. And the, the one round of shooting when, uh, again, we didn't film all the rolls or anything, but there was one round of shooting when there was, what was it, 36 shuriken? Uh -huh. Shuriken shots into the dark, uh, not dark, sorry, into the death company, right? Yes, into yeah. the death company, and there was about four wounds that came out of that in the end because the amount you missed and then the amount that you failed to wound, uh, and then I ended up saving them all. <laughs> it was just like, okay, that's just happened, so. Yeah, just bonkers. It was very much <laughs> up and down, as we as we said in the game. You know, I think that but, but I'm not allowed to complain about my dog. No code conduct. Co -conduct no. Yeah. I'll make sure I kick him out of the house if he ever whinges. <laughs> if he ever whinges about his dice rolls, because <laughs> yeah, because that's the yeah, likely, isn't it? You know. But it was back and forth, though. It was very much back and forth, very much. So I I, I honestly thought that a, a, when my sanguinary guard did not make that charge. I said to Max, that's it, that's, that's the game now. You'll, you'll kill these guys and, you, and you'll have your Shining Spears, nine Shining Spears running around uncontested. They'd wipe me off the objectives. You'd set up everything else. That was the game. Yeah, so it was uh, with Doom, with Jinx, yeah. so all laser lances. As soon as they hit and the wound came through, they were instantly dying because they had yeah. no kind of pains or anything like that. Um, this is why I was a little bit cocky with the shooting, being able to just put all the shooting into that... Essentially, okay, he needed to die though. It was worth eight points. It was an eight point difference between strangle hold, hold uh, and holding objectives, oath the moment. It was, it was yeah, worth everything. So, yeah, it was worth it. You know, in hindsight, it's like maybe he shouldn't have shot too many, so now he did pretty much <laughs> die to the first shot. Literally, yeah. to, the first Literally one, yeah. to the first one. But you don't know. You don't, you don't know. And, uh, you know, nine shining spears on the charge into nine sanguinary guards. So, with the. Uh, was it? To die. Uh, with Hunters and Hidden Relics, each one was having three attacks, four attacks from the Exarch, Doom. Yeah, I thought it was in my favour, but obviously not. Yeah, it was just, the, I think, the minus one to hit from the Sanguinary Guard. Cause those Death Masks, I did not account for those. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty good. Yeah, as soon as I finished shooting, I, just, I thought, wait a sec, what do Death Masks do? <laughs> yeah, it's like, look at the book. Oh, minus one to hit, who oh. knew? Oh no. It used to be a leadership thing. So, yeah, so... That was that was probably Very part fun. of the issue, but yeah. So uh, yeah, we really enjoyed that game, though. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you guys did as well. It was absolutely brutal. Going to have more brutal encounters on the channel to come, hopefully, eh, Max? Well, if you invite me back, you yeah, know. yeah, that's it. As long as you don't bring anything too horrible, <laughs> <laughs> just bring stuff that I can beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's everything I own at yeah. this point. That's, uh, that's, that's in the code of conduct as well. <laughs> yeah. I'll only play if I can beat you. Yeah. So, uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, remember to um, subscribe, like, share, do and all that, all the comments and everything. It really helps us out with the algorithm because algorithm is kicking our butt at the moment and uh, we're literally getting no views on our videos. So if you can help us out in any way, that would be great. Uh, if you can subscribe as well, only about 20% of you subscribe to our videos. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, it's free. Just click it.
you're a legend. Thank you. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.